기도해 보니 마셔. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزيدنا علما all oh, praises due to Allah, we praise Him, we seek His help and we seek His forgiveness, we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but one, Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefits us and, to benefit us and to benefit us with what He has taught us and to increase us in Islamic knowledge. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this lecture and this series a beneficial series for yourself and I and make it heavy in the scales of our good deeds on the Day of Judgment. And I also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this specific time, in this specific uh, place, inshaAllah, to protect, safeguard, and give victory to our brothers and, us, and our sisters in Palestine, in Palestine, to give them victory against the Zionist terrorists. Allahumma ameen. We continue on with this series. And generally speaking, whenever you open up a book of Qisas al Anbiya, the stories of the Prophets, after Salih alayhi salatu wasalam, which we discussed two weeks ago, the Qawm Thamud, after that they speak about the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And then after they speak about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Ishaq and, and Yaqub, they jump back to Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. Because generally Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam is very basic, very simple. And if you were to realize even the story of Hud and Salih, they're kind of all the same. It's unique in its own way. But they, they were bad, they became, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up destroying him, generally speaking. And Lut alayhi salatu wasalam is kind of the same concept, but the problem with that is that this day and age we're living in, yani it's a whole different story now. The importance of Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, it has a different uh, approach to it now. Different to any other time. And this is yani, something that you and I need to be aware of. So that's why we need to make sure that we take our time and explain a few things about this topic. That's the first thing. Second thing is that the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he is the, pretty much the main prophet that every, or the three religions go back to, which is obviously Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Tayyib. And subhanAllah, as I promised, is that I want to include another series along this series, which is the origins of Bani Israel, of the Jews, pretty much. Tayyib. And how they began and what they what did they do, when were they in power, what happened when they were in power, and so on and so forth, is another series that I want to introduce with the current series that we are taking, inshallah. So I thought let's jump straight to the uh, story of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, finish that, and then we'll begin with the inshallah the uh, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and then the beginning and the origins of Bani Israel in a more detailed form, inshallah. Lut alayhi salatu wasalam and Ibrahim والسلام, lived at the same time. They lived at the same time. And they were actually relatives. People think they're cousins. No. Ibrahim والسلام, is actually the uncle of Lut. The actual blood uncle. Blood uncle of Lut. والسلام. So Lut والسلام, is the son of Haran ibn Tara. Tara is Azar, as we know in the Quran. Tara is actually Azar in the Quran. So Ibrahim والسلام, is the son of Tara, of Azar. So he's the brother of Haran. Haran is the father of Lut. Haran is the brother of Ibrahim. والسلام. 
They were all disbelievers except for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Tayyip. So when they eventually migrated, which we're going to discuss more in detail with Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, subhanallah, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam went from, uh, subhanallah, from Iraq to Asham. To Philistine, sorry, to, to Philistine. And Ibrahim and Lord went to Sadum in Jordan. Tayyip. So now they are separate, separated. Lord is in Sadum, which is in Jordan, and Ibrahim is in Philistine, in the Sham. Lord was mentioned in the Quran 27 times. He was mentioned 27 times in the Quran. He was sent to a group of people. Now let's begin. We've got the formalities out of the way. Let's begin. Lord was sent to a group of people, his nation, the people in Sadum. They were no one like them before. And nothing after them. The people of Lord, and nothing after them. You must say, even this time, uh, even this time. No comparison between that time. Where Lut was there and the day and age you and I live in. I'm going to give you some reasons behind that. So these people were criminals. They were filthy, disgusting people. People who had no shyness, no haya, no what? No haya. That's what they were known for. And they were pretty much. Everything opposite to natural instinct. Natural instincts. Now I'm going to give you some hints because I can't say everything directly. I'm going to give you some hints too so we can understand a bit more inshallah. Now before I continue, just to, you know, a, a disclaimer as you want to, if you want to say. Yani. Awalan, Australian law. Australian law we're talking about. I am allowed to say what I'm going, what I'm going to say. I'm allowed to preach about my religion. I am allowed to talk about Lord I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to say that Islam, okay, its laws says that this uh, certain practice is wrong. I'm allowed to say that. Every one of us is allowed to say that. Tayyip. The only problem when it comes to Australian law, and I've been to those meetings, and I've already I've asked questions, these are the meetings that we've had, is that you can't speak to someone individually. You can't give them therapy. This is something that you want to need to know so we know what to do in life. Yani. Tayyip. Currently, Tayyip, currently, 31st of October 2023, we are allowed to talk in a general way. Uh, general, we're allowed to speak. So we're allowed to speak. You can't give therapy, even to an extent. If a young Muslim boy and a young Muslim woman comes up to you and says to you that, listen, I feel like uh, I, yani, uh, he's a man, but he has affection to another man, you legally can't tell him that this is wrong. And you need to be aware of this. You as a sheikh, you as a teacher, you as a youth worker, you as a normal human being, you can't give that young kid therapy. You can't tell him go to a sheikh, you can't tell him go get ruqya done on you. All of this is actually written down in the law that you can't do. Okay? So this is something that you, know, you all need to be aware of. Even if he comes and asks, why am I telling you this? Is because people can come up to you and say to you that oh, I need help. If he goes to the government, if he goes to the police, they will take it. They will take it. You are not allowed to give them therapy. I'll come back. Questions after, inshallah. You are allowed to give them. You are allowed, you're only allowed to support them. You are only allowed to what? Support them. So look after them. But generally speaking, uh, if you're talking to a specific person, a specific young boy or young girl, you can't tell them that this is right or this is wrong. You know, it's something that you want to be aware of. Well, like questions, I'll know it after, inshallah. That's one. Number two is that sometimes a, a, uh, a speaker will use different words. Not because he, he's scared of anything, but it's because of the algorithms that are you know, exist, existing at the moment is that whenever they hear anything, and you prove them wrong logically or rationally in any way or form, they'll take you down. I've copped heaps of videos now, alhamdulillah. Huh? They take you down straight away. It won't last. 
So sometimes we have to call them the people of the elephants. I thought I got away with the people of the alphabet, which is the, the, the terminology that the uh, Arab world used. That didn't work, cop that one as well. So we have to use different words, just uh, as long as the video is out there and as long as people understand the message, one person benefits, alhamdulillah, I'm happy. And that's what we're supposed to do. We have to be intelligent and smart on how to approach these things. So now Australian law, we know. We know we can talk broadly. I can speak about them broadly, generally. If an individual comes to you and asks for advice, you give them this advice, and he turns his back and he says that you gave me advice to the, to the government, they can take you, prison you, I think it was six years, or a huge fine, from what I remember, inshallah. And they actually can take you a lifetime to, to prison if this young boy or young girl kill themselves. I'm, I'm actually serious. They've got to prove it. They have not one case. They haven't won one any case. There's no cases. Aslan, they don't want to take a case because... It's يعني, something that's unnatural. What's the judge going to do, يعني, in other words? But it's something that you want to be aware of. طيب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam, Allah the Almighty has created two genders. Wallahi, only two genders. A male and a female. طيب. And if you were to die, or if we were to die, if a man was to die, and another century after, your, يعني, only what remains is your bones, and a scientist comes and examines this bone, he will say either you're a male or you're a female. Either a male or a female. He, well, he won't ask this bone, what do you identify as a cow or a dog or a donkey? No, he doesn't ask that. He doesn't ask you, what do you identify as a woman if you're a man? No, he doesn't. Khalas, this is what it is. You're a, human, you're a male and or you're a female. Two genders, alhamdulillah. We're still not, yani. These are two genders. And from the natural instincts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in us human beings which is called al-fitrah he has made the male have feelings and emotions towards the female and he has had he has made the female have attachments and emotions towards the male that's the general ruling and the general law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on this earth anyone that moves away from the natural instinct is called in Arabic shawad unnatural that's one of the translations Irregular. Shawaz. Tayyip. And this shawaz, this irregular practices, might have been heard of before Qawm Lut. One, two, in, in, in a population of millions. One or two, for example. But it's never, ever been heard of as the entire nation following this unnatural instinct. Following this unnatural course, never ever been heard before. So what am I trying to say? Is Qawm Lut, Qawm Lut, there's no exact, obviously, um, number, but the Qawm Lut, the nation of Lut, they're his people, over 90% easy, over 90%, if not 95%, because only a few believed in him, over 95%, let's say, were people of the alphabets. Or they were people that, there were men that only liked men. They didn't come close to women. Tayyip. Over 90%. And why did I say it's never been like that and it will never be like that? Statistics. Well, I'm not bringing this from, my, from the Quran. Statistics. 80% talking today, 80% of the human population in the entire world are heterosexual. Meaning a man likes a woman and a woman likes a man. How much? 80%. 3% are gay. In the entire population, 3% are gay. And 4% are bisexual. These ones don't know which one. When they, this one, they overtakes him, يعني, or takes her. But 4% in the entire world. So 3% gay, or lesbian. 4%, sorry, I'm using these terminologies, but something we need to be aware of, 4% are bisexual. And 80% are normal human beings. Normal feelings. As for the other remaining 10% or 11%, they don't want to mention it. They don't want to mention what they are. I'm going to give it to them. But over 80%, subhanAllah, have a certain a natural feeling. And we go against them and give a certain rights to 3% of the human population and push this agenda. These are statistics that you want to need to be aware of so we can understand, inshallah, and actually have these information so we can argue back and refute these people. 
I have to give. This is very important, inshallah. So Shawath. So these people in Lut were more than eight, there were more than 90% Allah who were gay, subhanAllah, people in Qawm Lut. And subhanAllah, these people, subhanAllah, they um whenever a huge number like this occurs, there is no doubt there's going to be some sort of corruption, destruction, diseases, sicknesses widespread. And in reality, life won't move on or go on if what am i trying to say if there's a hundred percent people on this earth right now who are gay what happens to this world well it stops i'm saying hundred percent it will stop there's no more, no more offsprings and if a hundred percent of the population today are normal heterosexual what happens life goes on there's an offspring so subhanAllah, this, يعني, these people in Qawm Lut, in Samu, Sadum, يعني, diseases and sicknesses have been widespread. They have been widespread. If you were to go online, my brothers and my sisters, if you were to go online, it is very difficult to find a proper report like maybe five, six years ago. Five, six, five, six years ago, the counselors, psychologists, doctors, everyone was talking about it. And saying all the uh, subhanAllah, the diseases and the um, the sicknesses that come for you being gay, طيب? and even some of them said that was it was a mental sickness. All that is gone. It's all eradicated. It's all finished. Very hard to find anything. If you were to read the reports, طيب? then what would they what would they say? They would say, for example, uh, they would say subhanAllah that it may cause this. It may, subhanAllah, have a, a disease. And it may, and يعني, the one show its true nature. The diseases and the sicknesses and say it's mental. And no, they, it's all, that's all gone. It's all eradicated. And you and I come and say this to a person, to a young, directly to a kid. We can't say these things. But if you were to find the report, there's all these sicknesses. And just lately, was the, one, the, the monkeypox, one of the main reasons was being gay. And subhanAllah being gay, especially about talking about men, because we're talking about Qawm Lut, is that there's only one way of satisfaction, generally speaking. And if you were to research what that causes, even to women, which Islam is, I know is obviously haram. In Islam it's haram. And subhanAllah, if you were to look at the reports and, and the diseases, it says it may cause blood and... Uh, something will happen to, you, to your back and you have all these diseases but is it, all they say is it may, it may, it may but you and I as Muslims you and I as Muslims as soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this is wrong we submit without any scientific proof this is the strong iman and the strong belief that you and I to have you and I don't need to go to science to say, oh, this, okay, science, science said this is allowed, or this is correct, Khalas will believe in it. Science is secondary. Primary is the Quran. Whatever the Quran says, we follow, we believe. Even if the science in the entire world, like it's happening today, goes against the teachings of the Quran and the teaching of the Prophet, we put our hands and we say, we reject it. We reject it. This is the true iman that you and I need to have. And build in our young boys and our young girls. Build the yaqeen. Whatever the Quran says, Allah is believing. So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made forbidden, it is harmful for us. And harmful for society, even if you and I can't comprehend it at the moment. Subhanallah, Abdul Malik bin, ibn Marwan, he is one of the khalifa of the Muslims from the Umayyad Caliphate. He says, <coughs> Wallah, strong words. He says, if the Quran did not mention the people of Lut, he said, I can never picture or imagine there were such people. <coughs> Let me repeat that one. He says, if Allah did not mention Qawm Lut in the Quran, I would never ever picture or imagine that there were such practices or there were such people that did the action of Qawm Lut. And this automatically reminds me about a hadith that we mentioned in the previous series where the Prophet ﷺ says that one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, minor sign, one of the, one of the minor signs of the Day of Judgment is when a woman 
when a woman is dressed, she appears dressed, but in reality she's undressed. We all know this hadith and we all see the hadith. Do you know what the predecessors, the scholars of our past, you know what they explain this hadith? They explain this hadith, we're talking about 600 years ago, five, uh, maybe 800 years ago. They explain this hadith by saying is that a woman, she will have, she will dress up modestly. So abaya, hijab, you want to say niqab, niqab. But in her heart, she's undressed. There's no iman in her heart. Why? Well, how, does, how does this relate to anything? The, the ulama of the past, the scholars of the past, couldn't un, would never imagine that you see people who are on the roads, they are dressed in such clothes, but they have defined their entire body figure. They never comprehended it. Never imagined this would happen. Like Abdul Malik bin Nuwan, never he would never imagine this has happened if the Quran did not mention it, subhanAllah. So what we can tell from all of this is that this is unnatural. This is unnatural. It's not from the natural order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ لُوطٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The people of Lut disbelieved in all the messengers. Messengers is plural. There's an S. What do you mean Mursaleen? It's plural. How is it plural? They just, just, they just didn't believe in Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. As mentioned before, Whenever someone disbelieves in one prophet, he's disbelieved in all the prophets. Like Jews. They believe in Musa but they disbelieved in Isa and they disbelieved in the Prophet. Christians, they believed in Isa but they disbelieved in the Prophet. So that means you don't even believe in Isa. Because Isa told them about a man that will come after me, follow him, which is Ahmed, which is the Prophet. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٍ مِنْ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُونَ So now, Lord A.S. comes to these people, he's giving them da'wah. This action is haram, believe in Allah, remember what happened to the people before you, all of this. What do they say back to them? What do they say back to Lord A.S. when he told them, you know, stop going and doing these acts with the men, stop being gay, for example. And there's, a, there's a women in this nation. It wasn't like as if there was no women in that, in that place. No, there was women. Yeah, do Where are you going? going to men? Nothing like that before. So they say this reply. Two, two amazing replies. They say to him, Ya Lord, if you don't stop guiding us, telling us what to do, telling us to stop being gay, we will drive you out of this place. We will find that later, inshallah, as they threatened his life. They threatened his life, and Lord had some fear, and he actually got scared. You're talking about one person, and they say it was only him and his two daughters. His wife didn't follow him. It was only like three people in the whole nation following a certain, a certain way. Obviously, he's fearful. Obviously, there's some sort of fear. Any human being were humans. They were humans. So he had some fear in him. And we'll get back to that, inshallah. The best reply, this reply, wallahi al-azim, I cannot give a justice in, in English, but I'll try my best. And this makes so much sense, and this will make us so happy, and this yani, will make us amazing, have such an amazing feeling of what the people of Lut, these gay people said back to Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says in the Quran, فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابُ قَوْمِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوطٍ مِّنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ These three words. إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ They say among themselves that we're going to drive, so they say to Lut, they say to him, that we're going to kick you out of this place, ya Lut. Why? Because you are a person that is purified. You're a clean person. In other words, you're a sane person and they are insane. He's clean and they are impure. I didn't say that, they say about themselves. 
إنهم أناس يتطهرون. So we will not drive you out, yeah, yeah, Lord. Why? Because you're pure, you're clean, you're sane. And we are disgusting, filthy, absurd, insane human beings. So you do not suit our people. Yeah, Lord, alayhi salatu wasalam. You don't suit us. Get out of this place. We are filthy, disgusting, putrid people. That's what we are. That's what they're saying about themselves. Yeah. Wallah, I didn't say nothing. That's what they're saying about themselves. Allahu Akbar, these three words. Three words change the entire concept. What is praiseworthy, so you and I being clean, praiseworthy, being clean, something that's praiseworthy to everyone, not just to Muslims, to everyone, it becomes a slander. It becomes a slander. These people in Qawm Lut and anyone that follows these practices, they just it's just total opposite. The way they think, the way they act, everything they do is opposite to normal. Is opposite to normal. SubhanAllah. So they are talking about themselves that they are insane, they are filthy, they are dirty, they are disgusting. And that's why they want to push out. Subhanallah, Lord alayhi salatu wasalam, who is pure. Who is pure. So technically what, is, what, is, what we're trying to say here, if it's relevant to today, is that they are... Khalas, that's it, we understand, yeah? That's all it is. Okay, we'll continue on. A story that was mentioned, and this will make us understand more how Qawm Lut is. How opposite thinking they are. How preposterous... Ridiculous, idiotic, stupid, ab absurd, yani every word in the dictionary I want to say, yani, how they were. What happened is, this is a story. Tabi with me. It, it doesn't make sense, so you have, to pay, you have to pay attention. The story doesn't make, I'm telling you it doesn't make sense, but you have to pay attention, inshallah. An attacker throws, picks up a rock, picks up a rock, and he throws a, a, another person in Qamut. Throws an, a rock at another person. And he hit his head, headshot. And blood started to come out. Not much, but blood started to come out. So this person is the victim. Victim goes to who? The judge. He wants his rights back. He wants compensation back. Normal. So the victim that got hit by the rock took the attacker, the, the one that threw the rock in, took him to the judge. Both of them now in front of the judge. Yeah, like your judge, give us some of your wisdom. Judge between us. What happened? I was walking and this person picked up a rock and threw it in my head blood came out I want recompense uh, I want compensation I want something back so the judge asked the attacker is this true he said yeah he says you so you're saying you're pleading guilty in other words he said no I'm not pleading guilty the judge like him what do you mean you just said that you actually threw a rock at him he said yeah but I'm not guilty so this attacker says to him I'm not guilty like, why he says because I put in the effort Put in the effort to go down, pick up a rock, aim at him properly, throw it at his head to get him in the head. That required effort. I'm not going to give him compensation. He's going to give me compensation because I did all that for him. That's how idiotic these people were. How fried their thinking was. Well, the story didn't finish. The story doesn't finish. So what does the judge do? The idiot is the one I put the judge there anyway. But what does the judge say? He says to him, to the attack, he says, that makes a lot of sense. Victim, pain. Pain for him putting all this effort. So the victim is like, really? Is that your judgment? He says, yeah. Like, okay. He picks up another rock, throws out the judge, gets him in the head. Some blood came, comes out. He says, okay, you judge, pay the attacker what I'm meant to pay him. Everything is all of is just opposite. There's no sanity. They are all mentally ill, sick people. They're sick people. When you come into a person and he says, oh, I identify as disabled, and he cuts his eye out, and it's or, the origins is from here. It starts from here. That's why it's different. When you come to a person that can't identify himself, whether he's a human being or a cow, like, who, are you, who, who are you mocking? Who are you, who are you laughing at? 
If a person comes to you on my cow and he starts mooing, we're going to give him rights. Like, wow. He's sick. He's sick. He's sick. He needs, he needs someone to look after him. They, they can't identify themselves as what they want. What they want. And one is disabled. The best thing about disabled is uh, a quick tip. When you go going to find car park, you get off the car and you find any disabled car park, get out and the officer says to you, what's wrong with your time? I'll identify as, as, as disabled today and walk off. <laughs> Allah, Allah, I don't understand these people. Really. And the man that identifies himself as a woman goes to, they haven't done it yet because they can't because they're scared about it because this is rationally. If, if a man goes to a prison, he says, no, I identify as, as a woman and he goes to a woman's prison, what happens? And voila, these are the questions I actually asked one of the government representatives. What, what, do we, what, what happens? She says, oh, we haven't discussed this yet. You put laws and then you say you haven't discussed it? What's wrong with you people? More on that, inshallah, in, in the future, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends angels. Their job is to destroy Qawm Lut. Is to destroy Qomlut, to destroy these putrid people. But before they get to Lut, والسلام, they pay a visit to Ibrahim. They pay a visit to Ibrahim. And obviously, I'm going to get into more details when I speak about Ibrahim. والسلام, but they give him Bushra. So they give him the bushra, which is obviously that your wife is going to be pregnant and give you a son, inshallah. And then they also inform him that they're going to certain group, which is Qawm Lut, to destroy them. Allah calls them oppressors. The people in that nation are all are oppressors. So Ibrahim says back to the angels. قال إن فيها لوطا. Hold on, what are you doing? What are you going to destroy him? There's Lot عليه الصلاة والسلام there. Lot is there. What are you going to do? You're going to destroy him more. قالوا نحن نحن أعلم بمن فيها. They said to him, we know who's inside, and we will obviously protect him, preserve him, and those who followed him. إلا مرات. Except his wife. His wife betrays him. How? We get to that إن شاء الله. It's also mentioned that Ibrahim says to the angels, he says to them, do you punish people or a nation if there's 50 Muslims? They said no. How about if there's 10 Muslims? They said no. How about if there's one Muslim? They said no. He said, okay, there's Lord. Lord is there. So they replied to him, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, we know. Stop. Stop your plea. We're going to save Lord. We're going to save him and then destroy the rest. But this is actually interesting. This, this narration here is actually interesting. Because back in the days, subhanAllah, is that they would not destroy a place where there's believers. Previous nations, they would not destroy a nation if there were believers, even if there's one. They would always protect them. But today is different. Today, as the Prophet indicated to us in a, in a, in a hadith, today is different. When a destruction occurs on earth, the good and the bad will cop it. The good and the bad. As if you if you die and you're good, you go in Jannah. The bad, that's his punishment. That's the, the fine line. The fine line is that now in this nation, this law does not apply to us. It does not apply to us. Is something that you want to be aware of. So what is happening in Palestine, for example, and I have to mention something. What is happening in Palestine? You and I might be saying, and the problem is that the Muslims are losing hope. And when we lose hope, we're only giving them more, more power to the enemies. As soon as a Muslim loses hope, we're giving, we're giving them what they want. Because what drives us is our hope. Is our yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our, our hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what makes you and I live. Allah or else we're all going to be depressed and staying at home. No, this is wrong. This is wrong. So we lose hope. When we see these videos of Allah is something that really hurts our hearts and it's, it's part of our iman to feel pain. Part of our iman, our belief, is to feel pain. But do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. Aslan, their deaths are martyrs. 
They're going directly to Jannah, man. Wallahi, they're going directly, directly to Jannah. And the ones that they die from them, they're going to hell. They're going to hell. So, subhanAllah, the most important thing is do not lose hope. Second thing, my brothers and sisters, if these videos are affecting you, even though you shouldn't be sharing these videos of pain, Islamically speaking, Islamically speaking, we shouldn't be sharing videos of pain from our brothers and sisters. It is bad for the Palestinians first. Second, you're making us lose hope. You're making people lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islamically, it's wrong. Don't expose our weakness to the world. You find the video of hope when you see that, that man, that father, where his son passed away as a martyr and he was telling other people, don't cry. Those videos you share. Those, those videos. Because wallahi, though, if they were to bomb the world of in Gaza, we will always see one or two have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what gives us iman and strength. Wallahi nazim. And that's what hurts the enemies of Islam more than any rocket shot is when they see hope. So my advice is if you're seeing these videos and they're affecting you, get off your phone, turn off social media. You're not harming them by doing that. No, the way you want to protect and preserve them is dua. And I do, do not underestimate your dua. Wallahi, do not underestimate it. Oh brother, you're saying dua. All these mashaykh are saying dua. What are you saying? The salah al-mu'min, the, the, the ammunition of the believer is dua. Is supplication. Proper supplication. Aslan, we didn't reach the point that we're in at the moment, except because we moved away from the deen. That's the haq. We always say, oh, we want the, the power and, and the honor as the Muslims before us. So you're saying we had honor before. Yes, we had honor before. So what did they do different that, we don't, that we're not doing? That's all we need to say. Wallah al-Azim. We don't need to invent a new way of getting honor again. No, no, no. The things are there. The teachings are there. It's going back to the Quran and going back to the Sunnah. Nothing more, nothing less. We do this, wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us victory. It's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In tansu, Allah yansurkum. We thabbit aqdamakum. You give victory to Allah, you get close to Allah, you follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws, you follow the Quran, you follow the Sunnah. Allah has promised, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never backed away from His promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises victory back to you. It's as simple as that. So if these videos are affecting you, stop, subhanAllah, watching them. Do something for them by changing yourself and becoming a better Muslim and each and every single person alive. Shaykh, not Shaykh, Da'i, not Shaykh. Every one of us can improve. Every one of us, inshallah. So, the, so subhanAllah, <coughs> the previous nations, they wouldn't destroy a nation if there was a believer. Today is different. The, after the angels say to Ibrahim, alayhi Ya Ibrahim, stop. They say to him, that they eventually make their way to Sadum. They make their way to Qawm Lut. Who sees him first? Mind you, the people of Lut weren't just homophobic, like homophobics only, like they weren't any gay, no, no. They were also oppressors in a way where like, they were pirates, criminals, full, full criminals, obviously. When there's no hayat, hay there's no shyness, you'll do anything and everything. If you don't have, uh, uh, subhanAllah, if you don't have shyness, you do anything. When they eradicate shyness and modesty to our Muslim brothers and sisters, we see what, what is happening today. You think a woman with a hijab on, she'll have a bit of modesty, <coughs> a bit of shyness, but not dancing around the whole world. No, no, no. The hijab is a, is a, is a model, is, is trending. Uh, they put on the scarf. I've seen this. I don't know if anyone else has seen it, but someone showed me this. Uh, I think around 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. Uh, he showed me the time, Yanni. Uh, a sister, Allah Mubarak, what's she doing at night? Praying Qim Allah? No, no, no. Niqab, Allahumma salli ala nabi, niqab now. What's she doing? She's got music at the background, dancing, and talking to men. <laughs> Look at this friend. And then we ask, why is this happening to the Palestinians? Like, ayyub, like, takhir Allah. Or like, wallah, wallah, I wish we were in Palestine. At least we die on la ilaha illallah. What are these people not dying on? And these different, and there's a lot of stories that you probably know more than me. What an embarrassment, man. Wallahi, what an embarrassment. I don't want you guys to lose hope. But you and I need to know how, how far away we are from the deen. How far away we are from the religion. 
How far we are away from the core reason that will give us back, back honor. We are a nation that Islam has given us honor. Nothing else, not our numbers, nothing else. Islam, Islam has given us honor. فَمَنْ اِبْتَغَ الْعِزَّةَ بِغَيْرِ إِسْلَامِ أَذَلَّهُ اللَّهُ Whenever you try to get honor with something besides Islam, Allah is going to destroy us. We're humiliated at the moment. Genuinely speaking. It's because we moved away from the Quran and the Sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ at the time of, of him, he says, عَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِسِ Bite on it, do not let it go. You let go of the Quran and the Sunnah, you're gone. You're gone. And I'll tell you how far we are away from, from the practical example, how far away we are at the moment. If you go to one of your family members who is not practicing, has not prayed anything, don't do it. But if you were to go to one of your family members and he's sitting there and he cares for Palestine, he cares, alhamdulillah, that's the good ones. They care for Palestine, so they're sitting down in a circle with shisha in their mouths. Oh Allah, see what's happening in Palestine? You're there, you're there, huh? What, what, Allah? I'm not, Allah, you know, as much as I was going to say it's a joke, but it's true, Allah is true. So he's smoking. I dare you go up to him and say to him, brother, if you care about Palestine, break that argila right now. Break that shisha. I dare you. He'll break it on your head. He'll not accept it. We, we lie, we lie. We just hack. We're the people now at the moment, we're the people of tongues. Our actions aren't there. There's no action. We can spend four or five hours in the protest, but when a sheikh takes more than 11 minutes in, a, in Maghrib prayer or Isha prayer or Dhuhr prayer, oh, the, the front line will kill you. Not, not the one in the back, the front line. But four hours in a protest, screaming and, and everything. That's how far away. And I'll lie, I'll try to be positive. But also being positive is being realistic. Being realistic. People want the Mahdi. What Mahdi? What Mahdi? If the Mahdi comes up to you and says to you, brother, what you're doing is haram, brother, what? But if, you know what? I'm going to ask another question. If the Mahdi comes and he says, like, I want the Muslims with me, how is he going to differentiate between a Muslim and a non Muslim when the Muslims are doing the worst things in a non Muslim? What, what, what? Mahdi, we want the Mahdi. You think that's going to be an easy solution? We've got to be prepared for the Mahdi. We've got to be prepared for him. We've got to be working. When he says, do this, we do it. When a sheikh says something, this goes backwards. This guy, yani, and the AMCT, yani. Well, it's reality. You come down the member, and a brother wants to complain about something that's definitely, yani, something that's very, they just want to complain. They just want to talk. Brother, did you hate the khutbah? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Brother, what time did you come to the khutbah? Oh, I just made the first rak'ah. How, how, how far have we moved away from the religion? Wallahi alaikum. Do you know the religious one today? Want to sit down behind the screen and just talk about this sheikh and that da'i and that sheikh. And that. Allah al -Azim, it's, it's embarrassing. Wallahi, the way we get victory is the same way they got victory. The same way we want honor is the same way they got honor. Come back to the Quran and Sunnah, man. Be proud of your name. Be proud of your prophet. Be proud of your God. Practice these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala us to do. When they walked into Sadum, the first people that saw these angels were subhanAllah the daughters of Lut And they saw these men because they appeared as men. And they feared for their lives because you come in, you might not get out. But obviously he doesn't know the angels. But if a man walks in, he doesn't just get stripped but his money, he gets stripped everything. So she quick, uh, they quickly hid the angels into the house of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. What happens? What happens to Lut? Who are these people? How did, what did they say to him? Insha'Allah all of this and more next week. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him and preserve us. Insha'Allah follow him next week. And with those public holidays, we will still have the lecture insha'Allah. We're going to be discussing about the punishment. What did the angels do? How did Lut react to the angels? And what does Islam say about this, in general speaking? And also, refuting so-called hijabi and bearded Muslims who say that this is allowed in Islam. This act is allowed in Islam. I want to refute that, inshaAllah. 
and usually speaking, the Lord Jesus takes more, no, no more than 30 minutes. Well, I don't think, no more than 30 minutes. But you have realized, you have realized how relevant it is for today and how much things we can learn from the actual story of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. So that's what we're going to have, maybe two, just maybe two parts, inshallah. We'll continue next week after Maghrib Tuesday. I'll call you, call you,